Who is the tenth man? The tenth man is the one man out of every ten persons in your community who will suffer from a psychiatric illness at some time during his life. How can we prevent this suffering? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ralph Bellamy inviting you to listen to Dr. Troubleshooter, the story of psychiatry and industry. Our story begins in the infirmary of a vast industrial plant. The medical officer is talking with a girl from the inspection line. Dr. Milton. Yes? I'm Amy Warren. I wanted to ask you... I'm busy with these x-rays now. Would you wait outside, please? Well, the nurse said it was all right to come in here because that's what I wanted to see you about. My chest x-rays. I see. Very well. You come in here a lot, don't you? Anybody would get sick on that job I've got. Oh? What do you do? I inspect bearings. They come by me on a conveyor belt and I reject the ones that are defective. Warren, Amy Warren, here we are. There there are two sets of films. Yes, I asked you to have them done over last week, remember? I guess you didn't believe us the first time. Well, let's look. There we are. Nothing for you to worry about, Miss Warren. No spots of any sort. Uh, But didn't we notify you that you were perfectly okay? Yes, I got a memo, but... Well, that's why I came to ask you to take them again. I'm sure I've got TB. Now, wait a minute, Uh, What makes you so sure? My sister has it. She's away at a sanatorium now. But I caught it from her. Uh, When did your sister go away to the sanatorium? Six months ago. Six months ago. But, Miss Warren, these x-rays were taken only a week or so ago. Now, if you'd contracted the disease... Just the same, I know I've got TB. I looked it up in the doctor book, and I've got all the symptoms, every one. I cough a lot, and I have shortness of breath. And I get dizzy sometimes, and, and, and things get blurry. Well, I can't do anything more than assure you that there is nothing wrong with your lungs. I gave you a complete physical examination only last week, and you had nothing wrong with you. That's right, Dr. Milton. You said everything would depend on the X-rays. Well? Then the X-rays must be wrong. You what? Maybe the machine wasn't focused right. I tell you, I know I've got TB. And I tell you, you haven't. Well, if I haven't got it, I'm going to get it. After all, I know better what's going on inside me than anyone else. Miss Warren, you've got a lot of vague symptoms and nothing in the x-rays or on the physical examination. That doesn't add up to tuberculosis or to any physical disease, in my opinion. I'd like Dr. Vaughn to see you. Is he a TB specialist? No, he's a psychiatrist. Are you telling me I'm crazy? No, Miss Warren. But you seem nervous and unusually worried. Now, I think Dr. Vaughn can help you. What'll he do? Try and talk me out of it, too? Why not give him a chance? I'll do what you say, Doctor. But I think you're making a mistake. So Amy Warren went to see Dr. Vaughn, the plant's psychiatrist. In the course of several interviews, she told him her story. I came to this town three years ago when my sister Ruth's husband was killed in the war. Ruth had the baby to take care of, so I came to help out. And then six months ago, she went away to the sanatorium, leaving me to bring up the little boy. He's in a nursery during the day. I pick him up on my way home from work every night. I don't get much fun out of life these days. Sometimes I wonder if Ruth isn't better off. She's taking it easy at the sanatorium while I'm bringing up her kid. No, that's foolish. Of course, I don't mean that. I used to have boyfriends before I was so tied down, but I was never really popular like Ruth. Everyone said I was the intelligent one. She and Liz, my other sister, got married. Not that I envied them. I wanted a career. I guess I am kind of lonely. I can't even talk to the people I work with on that stupid, monotonous inspection job. I used to work in an office as a secretary. But I came to work here because the money was better, and now I need it for Danny. I asked for a secretarial job here, but 
Personnel said that would mean less money. I'd have a hard time managing on less. Ruth doesn't have to worry about that anymore. And now she's given me that disease. Only nobody believes I have it. And on top of everything, Dr. Milton told me I was crazy. Well, if I haven't got TB, what is wrong with me? Hello, this is Mr. Foster speaking. Oh, hello, Dr. Vaughn. What can I do for you? Hmm? Oh, the Warren girl. Oh, that's a coincidence. The section foreman sent a report on her and here to personnel only this morning. Let's see. The report says she has the highest record of absenteeism in the section. The quality of her work has fallen off, too. It seems she complains she gets spells when she can't see well. Well, yeah, personally, I think she needs glasses. Well, uh, then she needs better glasses. Hmm? Another job. Uh, secretarial. Uh, but Dr. Vaughan, Miss Warren has antisocial tendencies. She'd never get along in the office section. Well, if you think so. Although I feel... Well... Well, perhaps we can find something. Well, anyway, I'll have a talk with her. Well, uh, yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Vaughan. And goodbye. Personally, I think she ought to be fired. Come in. Hello, Mr. Foster. Oh, Miss McLeod. I thought, um... Well, uh, isn't Dr. Vaughn in this afternoon? Well, he's been called back to town unexpectedly. Oh. Is there anything the social service department can do for you? No, thanks. Uh, perhaps I'd better come back. It was about an employee, Amy Warren. Oh, that is an interesting case, isn't it? Oh? Uh -huh. You know about it? <laughs> Why, yes. In fact, I've been working on it. Well, don't waste any more time on it. I think we ought to let her go. Oh, but Why? Well, I took Dr. Vaughn's suggestion about changing Miss Warren to another job, and oh, But uh, how has it worked out? Terrible. Oh? She changed jobs two weeks ago, and now her absenteeism record is the highest in the office section. And she still complains of coming down to TB. So she hasn't started to improve yet? Uh, far from it. I hate to say it, but uh, I don't think she ever will. Of course, it's only been a few weeks. Well, Dr. Vaughn said she found that job on the inspection line monotonous and boring. Well, it was too simple a job for a person of her intellectual level, so we got her another job. And look... Mm, well... Well, I usually give Dr. Vaughn a lot of credit for his help in putting the right person in the right job, but this time I think we all missed the boat. I don't know where we can fit Miss Warren in. Well, perhaps I can explain, Mr. Foster. Yes? You see, Amy Warren's a pretty sick girl. Not with tuberculosis, of course, but... Being responsible for a sister's child and not having any social life is taking a lot out of her. Now, we have to change those outside factors before she shows any improvement in her work here with us. Is uh, that what you're doing now? Well, yes, the job situation is what seemed to be bothering her most, so Dr. Vaughn asked you to change that. And now, after a series of interviews with her, he's found out about the home problems, and, well, they'll take a little time to work out. Well, uh, what sort of thing can you do? Well, we found out that she has another married sister who lives in Clay City. And she's agreed to take the little boy for a month or so. Uh -huh. And that will give Amy a chance to rest up and maybe have a little social life. You know, looking after someone else's child and holding down a job to keep a roof over your head isn't easy. Uh -huh. And when you add the fact that she has no recreation, well, it's resulted in a neurotic reaction. One which expresses itself in various physical symptoms and an obsession about tuberculosis. Yes, I, uh, I guess you're right. There's still a lot to be done in her case, but given a chance, she'll perk up. You'll see. Yes, yes, we'll see. Well, uh, I must go now, Miss McLeod. Thanks very much. Shall I tell Dr. Vaughn that you'd like to see him? Uh, you mean about Miss Warren? Yes. Uh, no, no, I think not. We'll just wait and see, shall we? <laughs> And the social worker was right. Within a month or so, Amy's absenteeism was negligible. She took a much greater interest in her work and no longer worried about tuberculosis. One morning, in fact, she was heard humming a song as she walked to work. 
Oh, good morning, Miss Wine. Oh, good morning, Mr. Foster. Nice day, isn't it? It's a lovely day. No ill effects from dancing too much last night? I've never danced too much, Mr. Foster. <laughs> well, well, you reach my... <laughs> Hello, Amy. Well, good morning, Miss McCloud. Well, how's little Danny? He's fine. He's coming home to me next month. And Ruth may be coming home soon, too. Oh, have you heard from her? Yes, I got a letter from her last week. Her doctor thinks it shouldn't be too long before she'll be cured of TB. Well, that is good news. And I'm cured, too. But you never had it. I know. But I'm cured just the same. It looks as if Amy's going to be all right. But it was touch and go for a while. Like machines, we human beings sometimes need the help of a troubleshooter to get us back into working order. Perhaps you'd be interested in Dr. Vaughn's psychological explanation of Amy's neurosis. You see, Amy felt insecure in looking after her sister's child, partly because of the responsibility and partly because it emphasized to her her own failure to achieve marriage and motherhood. At the same time, her job on the inspection line was beneath her capabilities. This further impaired her self-esteem. The phobia of tuberculosis partly symbolized her feeling that she was inferior and also concealed her unconscious wish to retreat into illness. Because if she had tuberculosis, she could go, like her sister, to a sanatorium where she'd be looked after, far from her tiresome job and home responsibilities. Only when all these factors had been unearthed by the psychiatrist could something be done about helping Amy. Now, you didn't meet Dr. Vaughn. That was to show you how the industrial psychiatrist works. He's the man behind the scenes. The man who works not secretly, but unobtrusively. He's the man who understands the problems of all the people who keep a great factory going. And above all, he knows what should be done to keep running smoothly that most delicate machine of all, man. <laughs> just heard Ralph Bellamy as narrator in Dr. Troubleshooter, produced by the National Mental Health Foundation and presented through the cooperation of other organizations dedicated to the preservation of mental health. <laughs>